Hey guys, it's Hans Hobbies, and here is another update video about my Red Cat Racing Landslide XTE. Um, more, all, all of this information will be all condensed into a single 10 to 15 minute review for people that just want a quick overview of an end review of the truck. So. These videos are more about if you want after watching that video or before watching that video, I guess, because it's not out yet as of the timing, timing of this video. Um, if you want more information about this truck, just more in-depth tips and tricks, just kind of like uh, sitting at the workbench with me um, to go over the truck and my experiences with it as I test it for review. Um, I managed to get this thing out to the track today. It's a lot of fun on the track. Um, I will have running footage of it. I, I'm going to put the running footage separately. I just want the running footage to be its own thing, just so people can kind of watch that video in the, like just by itself to get a feeling of whether they would have fun with the truck or not. Just, just a raw running footage. No music, no editing or anything like that. Just the only editing I'm going to do is like piecing together video clips that I that I filmed but um, you can check that out soon but for now I just got run I just got done running it earlier today um, um, running it on 4s for the first time my friend brought over a couple of 2s Dean's packs so I was able to run it for four on 4s for the first time and let me tell you on 4S, this thing is, it's, it's insane. Like it's, it's really fast. Um, it's not the fastest truck out there, but because of its sheer weight and size, it just feels faster than it is. And it also accelerates up to its top speed very quickly. So pretty crazy truck. Um, and honestly, I, after driving this thing, I know, I understand why a lot of people nowadays are really into the 4S 6S super high power cars. Cause it is a lot of fun. Um, I don't think it's overpowered though, which is nice, but it's it's still very powerful and, and a lot of fun to drive on 4S. Uh, I even took it on some of the ramps and the jumps there, did some tumbles and stuff, and that's kind of what I'm here to talk about. Uh, the wheels are off of it because um, it was pretty muddy at the track, so I had to clean it, and I just haven't put the wheels back on. Um, but you can see, unfortunately for this body that I really, really like the look of, um, it's pretty beat up, pretty crushed up. Um, it's worse the it's worse for a wear on the rear. It's, you can see a lot of the stress marks in the rear. It's really really beat up, um, and that's mainly due to the fact that at the rear it's a lot more flat areas of Lexan that's not as um, durable and not as stiff just structurally just because of the shape of it. The front of it survives pretty well just because um, it has a lot of like 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 divots. And a lot of molded details. So the front of the front of the body is pretty pretty rigid, but the rear bed area is really floppy, um, and it's even more floppy because the rear body mounts are broken. And another thing is, if you see the car right here, the body is on straight, but the bumper is twisted. So remember in the previous update video when I said your chassis is bent if your body doesn't drop on properly well my chassis is bent uh, I did this is one one pack one uh, run with 4s and my chassis is bent and actually surprisingly it's bent in the front which is not where I expected it to bend um, so now so my rear body 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 posts have been completely sheared off absolutely just destroyed up here um so that's unfortunate to say the least um and even if the body posts were there i think the reason those the, the rear body posts part of the reason they they sheared was because um surprisingly this body is actually the the holes on the body are pretty tough um, the chassis is actually bent upwards in the front. So if you put the front, if the body, line up the body in the front and you look through the holes in the rear, um, the, po the, the holes don't line up anymore. The holes should be right there, but they line up right on top of the shock caps. So definitely bent up, 
uh, a little bent. And it's also apparent from the front bumper. It's a bit twisted up up here. So um, it's definitely a bit tweaked to say the least. You can also tell because right here on this upper like bulkhead, a uh, bulkhead like brace, there's a slight bend right there. Um, as well as the chassis up front is supposed to be uh, bent up slightly, but it's bent up at a slight twist and also it's bent farther than it's supposed to be. You can see the the angle here is a little bit a little bit steeper than it used to be. So that's a bit unfortunate. Fortunately though, um, from initial inspection, it does not seem like I bent my front drive shaft though. Um, it still has a little bit of play in there, barely. Um, I think out of the box it had enough like play in the drive shaft where even though the chassis bent, um, all it did was jam the dog bones into the drive cups and didn't actually uh, break it or bend it all the way. So that's fortunate. Uh, that that's that's pretty nice. Uh, it does seem like it is a hardened drive shaft. So, and um, I still have to take this apart to check it out in in depth. But it doesn't it doesn't drive like it's bent. It doesn't spin like it's bent. It doesn't really seem like it's all that terrible. Oh, I can actually I can see it there. It's it's ever so slightly bent, but not bad enough to the point where you can't use it. But uh, that that is that is pretty important because the the drive shafts are pretty expensive on Red Cat's website. Just this front center drive shaft is I think like fourteen dollars, which is uh, I think a lot of money for a drive shaft, especially just a simple dog bone style like that. But um, I'm just gonna continue running this bent one until it's completely unusable. I think but I will have to bend this chassis back down. Um, I was totally expecting this thing to bend at the rear because at the rear, like I mentioned, there is absolutely no bracing. And I did do some uh, a nose dives as well as some um, rear end crashes from some of those jumps. Because um, if you're not used to driving a, like a brushless monster truck like this, um, it's it's very touchy to the throttle input because the tires have a lot of rotating mass to it. So um, it took me a couple wrecks before I got um, I got used to driving it, and I also let a couple of my friends try it out as well. Um, which, uh, <laughs> if they are watching, I'm not saying they broke it or anything. That was kind of the point. I I kind of wanted to test the durability of this thing, so. Kind of helping me out in the review there, but yeah, I'm I'm actually surprised the rear is the rear is actually still flat. Like I can't even see it because of my arm, but the rear is actually still flat. It's not bent at all, um, and the rear drive shaft is still has a lot of play and like like a lot of enough um, wiggle room, and it's still straight, which means the rear is just completely fine. Um, the front is the one with the brace on it and it's still the one that bent so as i expected this front brace um update that they made to the truck it really didn't make a difference because i i suspect the problem is um, when i take it apart i suspect the a couple of the screws for this center diff assembly here um i i suspect a couple of the screws are going to be stripped or backed out slightly because um, what I suspect happened was when this bent up, this whole thing just pushed the entire center diff assembly up and backwards. Um, because the brace is still straight. This, 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 this link is still straight. But if you see the mounting point here, you can see it's at an angle. Um, and there's other points that make it obvious that the front of the chassis is bent. So... Yeah, I, I personally didn't even run it as hard as a lot of other people run it, and it's still bent. So the chassis is pretty pretty soft, I think. That's definitely definitely something that a lot of people are going to have problems with. So that makes me pretty happy that I do have that center brace on order, because that since that one's going to be tying the front and rear bulkheads together, 
um, that one should allow for a lot more um, chassis rigidity rather than this just simple fix here because this is going to move. This and this tied together is not going to move, but this and this tied together, it's going to move and it did move. So this um, doesn't help at all. Um, good on Red Cat for trying, but and I respect Red Cat for trying, but they really needed to do a, a little bit more than that. So that's pretty unfortunate, uh, but fortunately it seems like the chassis aren't that difficult to bend back. It's just a matter of how far I have to bend it back because it is, like I mentioned, supposed to have a slight bend upwards in, 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 the, in the chassis. But um, I guess that center brace, when that comes in, will kind of help me adjust it. But other than, other than the chassis being a little uh, bent in the front, the rest of the truck still works perfectly fine. Um, these drive shafts on the, the, in, the, in, the, in the arms here, those are still straight. None of the arms are broken. And I, like I mentioned, had a couple of tumbles with this thing. Um, and arms are, um, arms are holding up. Um, all the gears are holding up. Nothing's stripped. Um, even though I suspect this has moved slightly, um, everything still works fine. Even with the, the, the bent front drive shaft here, everything still works perfectly fine. So I'm pretty happy about that. I think the only part I'm going to replace for now is just that rear body mount because you really don't want to drive the truck without a, uh, a body on it because the body actually does protect the inside of the truck. Um, so you don't really want to run it without the body, at least if you're going to be jumping it and stuff. So, yeah. Um... I think I'm, just, I'm I'm honestly probably going to just continue running it with the bent chassis um, until that brace comes in because there's no point in straightening it out and having it bend again. So, um, and it doesn't seem like it's damaged anything. So I think so far, 4S, um, 4S driving was mostly a success. And I'm... <laughs> I'm 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 still pretty satisfied with it. So, thank you guys for watching. If you guys want to see my impressions about the 4S driving, wait for my review video for this thing. I will talk about my impressions about the 4S driving. Um, this is just a video, just an update on the condition of the truck, because uh, as always, I have to have a working truck in order for me to do a complete review of it but yeah pretty happy with the truck overall still um even though the the front chassis is bent and i'm i'm really excited to do more driving on this thing just it's a fantastic truck i think so there's just just needs a couple minor upgrades but yeah um, if you guys enjoyed this video, as always, give me a like, comment down below, subscribe, all that good YouTube shenanigans. And uh, if you love the landslide, let me know in the comments and let me know any tips and tricks you guys have. And I'll see you guys next time.